each Florentine has this little touch of Guelfi and Ghibellini always in their blood. We are never happy of anything and you know there's always something that we could do better and we keep on blah 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 arguing and complaining and arguing and complaining. And since I was a child actually I was meant to come here. You, you don't think about anything else and that's where you kind of just pop in. Ponte Vecchio, the old bridge. It was built in 1345 and originally had butcher shops that later were replaced by jewelers so that the Medicis wouldn't have to smell raw meat while passing from Palazzo Pitti to Palazzo Vecchio. The row of 72 windows on top is the passage specifically built for the Grand Dukes and it's called the Vasari Corridor. When I was walking on the bridge this summer, like a tourist bumpkin, I couldn't even imagine that in a couple of months I could get inside one of those shops behind the wooden shutters with iron fleur de lis hinges called Madielle. But in September, during the Biennial Antique Fair, I was fortunate not only to get inside one of them, but also to meet the owner of the oldest goldsmith on Ponte Vecchio. My name is um, Elisa Tozzi Piccini and um, I am the fourth generation of a family business who started uh, on uh, this location in 1903. The view of the Arno River that opens from the shop's windows is priceless. Well, not really. I heard it's about 15 million euros. What's remarkable is that Piccini is the head of the company that bears the word brothers in its name. My great-grandfather, whose name was Pirro Piccini, started the business. In 1951, he changed the name of the company from Pirro Piccini into Fratelli Piccini, which means Piccini brothers, like his three sons. One was my grandfather and his two brothers. And now that I'm the fourth generation, the funny thing is we are all women. My mother, who's now 90 years old, myself and my sister. Being a woman in this kind of business nowadays, it's uh, challenging. Even if uh, it's funny to think about it because, you know, jewels are mainly referred to women the majority of the time, but actually it's really a man's world. So you have to deal with a lot of men and you have to, to surf through this kind of um, situation. Ms. Piccini even gave me a tour of the atelier upstairs on the third floor. And the view is not that bad. So it's a very oh, yeah. <laughs> Piccini came to work at the shop at a very young age. I started when I was 19 after I graduated as a graduate gemologist in GIA in Los Angeles. And since I was a child, actually, I was meant to come here because uh, in Italy and uh, in certain areas of the world, when you have a family business, you have like no chance. You, you don't think about anything else and that's where you kind of just pop in. Like this. Then you start with a little seghetto. She credits her great uncle Armando, who was a big part of the family business, with gaining her craftsmanship. The more gets, the more brilliance you get. Armando, who was the one with no sons at all, was the more talented one in this kind of um, business. In fact, he won when he was very young, at about 20, 21, the Biennial Prize in Venice for engraving stones and cameos. And uh, when we celebrated 90 years of activities, he donated the stones to the city of Florence. And now you can find them in the Tesoro dei Granduchi, which is in Palazzo Pitti. Then in 1958, my great uncle Armando won the Diamond Awards in New York, engraving a powder box in gold and uh, platinum. And since then, I had the privilege to sit down at the bench with uh, my great uncle, who taught me how to design and how to do little engravings and little things at the bench. When I have a spare time, I still sit there and enjoy doing things with my hands because this is part of our tradition. I learned a great deal about jewelry making. These are molds 
So this you is know. plastilina, right? No, or this is um, wood. Chalk. I think it's chalk. Chalk. Mm -hmm. See, then it solidifies and it becomes nice. like this. And this is a draw plate. This is called tirafili. So you put the wire of gold inside these holes and according to the, the diameter and the mm -hmm. dimension that you need, you pull it with this things and you pull it in thinner and thinner holes till you get the dimension that you want. This is an antique uh, machine. The modern ones are exactly the same, except that are electronic, but the functioning is exactly the same. But we do it so that she can exercise. Uh, yes. That's how gold is sorted. When the color change, you see it's uh, changing. And uh, when it become uh, Red, it's perfect. Artisan Carlotta Gambineri demonstrates the process. Magic. <laughs> then they put it through this scary looking machine called the rolling mill. <laughs> oh, here it is. Yes. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. So you're just flattening it, but not shaping it, right? It yes, just becomes exactly. flat. It depends on what you need. If mm -hmm. you need uh, a flat part, mm -hmm. you keep on putting here, mm -hmm. putting in it in mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. till you get the width that you need. Oh. If you need a different so kind of wire, right? you can use. And the, the final one. bit of knowledge before yeah, I consider myself an artisan is how to clean jewelry. Mm -hmm. This into the hole, and then you go like this. So each hole, oh, okay. you shine it like this. Wow. That's why I was telling you that you need time and everything, it's slow. I love this artisanal approach. And so... Is this wool? This is cotton. Ah, oh, cotton. Yes. It's a raw cotton because it has to have... Uh, Friction. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the dark part is because the metal released that. Uh, oh, okay, that's how it gets black. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. I think I've learned enough to make it on my own now. Okay. Grazie. Prego. To us, artisans are like, you know, we are like a big family, so we have to support them. They work for us, they work on their own, but they need to be supported because it's very, very hard to compete with huge, huge companies around the world. And uh, I think we should also slow down a little bit because to give birth to a piece of art, because a piece of jewelry is a piece of art, it's like when you get a painting or something which is handmade, it takes time, it cannot be just boom. So I think we should slow down a little bit, keep all these values and uh, don't forget the tradition and have really an eye towards the future. Traditions are very important in Florence. The Florentine people are very much still. Guelfi and Ghibellini, they were two part of the city and they were kind of fighting each other. Without going too deep into details, Guelphs and Ghibellines were two political factions in Middle Ages, akin like Democrats and Republicans now. Fun fact, the author of the Divine Comedy was exiled from Florence because he was a Guelph. And uh, nowadays that this actually doesn't exist anymore, but uh, it's kind of inside of each of us. So it's like if you live on one side of the river or on the other side of the river, if you live up on the hill or in the center, like the, the city of Florence is kind of divided in four, two different quarters. And uh, when the, we have the patron um, celebrations, which is San Giovanni on the 24th of June, uh, we have the final of Calcio Storico, which is like an historic soccer game where everybody is dressing the old dresses and everything and the city kinds of get cut in four and still, you know, there's this kind of, uh, you know, where you belong to this or that and it's kind of uh, all is hide, hidden in every one of us. So I would say that even it belongs to history, but each Florentine has this little touch of Guelfi and Ghibellini always in their blood. Which one is your favorite? 
I don't know actually if we belong to which or to one or the other. No, no, I really do not know. I'm quite ignorant on this subject, so I cannot tell you. But this is really we. We, are, we always complain. We are never happy of anything. And, you know, there's always something that we could do better and we keep on blah, 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 arguing and complaining and arguing and complaining. So it's... Uh, and uh, it's like with a soccer game, with our soccer team, if they lose, ah, they're terrible. If they win, yes, they won, but because they were playing with someone that was, wasn't good enough. So this is part of our culture and it will always be there no matter what we're talking about that's the way we are but it's very amazing i'm very proud and i love to carry on the tradition of my family because uh, that's part of my dna so you grew up in it and you have no other chance you don't know what else to do and you do it with passion it's just part of your life so it's very easy to do be sure to visit the shop next time you're in florence <laughs>